know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. This is a graveyard of American patent tanks once used by the Pakistani army. Nearly 100 of them were destroyed or captured by the Indian army in the battle of Asal Uttar in Punjab's Khemkaran sector in Tarnataran district which saw one of the fiercest battles during the 1965 India-Pakistan war. Near Asal Uttar which means fitting reply in English these tanks are on display at a place appropriately called Patan Nagar named after these military beasts the battle of asal uttar tells a story of grit and glory of indian soldiers who triumphed over sophisticated and powerful war machines supplied by the us to pakistan as pakistan was a member of the cento and ceto war pacts the indian military fought with winded second world war tanks and jets against us made patent tanks and F-84 Sabre jets. Indian Nats, Hunters and Vampire jets took on Sabre jets in air combat and beat the enemy hollow. The war took a heavy toll and 3,000 Indian soldiers died on various fronts against Pakistan's 5,800 men. But behind these brave men stood a rock-solid Lal Bahadur Shastri, India's diminutive Dhoti clad Prime Minister. This was Pakistan's second attempt to take Kashmir by force, and Pakistan's Foreign Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto urged President Ayub Khan to launch the attack on India on four assumptions. One, that the people of Kashmir would rise in revolt. Two, that the war would remain confined to the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir. Three, that India would be forced to negotiate Kashmir status under pressure. Lastly, they assumed it was an opportune time to attack a demoralized India after the 1962 China debacle and Jawaharlal Nehru's death. The hostilities began in April 1965 with Pakistan attacking Gujarat's run of Kutch to test India's military strength. They had limited success. Encouraged, they sent infiltrators into the Kashmir Valley under Operation Gibraltar in August to incite a rebellion among the local people. But the Kashmiris did not rise in revolt. Instead, they supported the Indian Army. In a counter-attack, India captured the strategic Haji Pir Bulge and Pass in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir close to the line of control, foiling Pakistan's designs in the valley. On the 1st of September, Pakistan launched Operation Grand Slam and headed for the vital Aknur Bridge. The goal was to take Jammu and cut off the valley from the rest of the country. The ultimate objective was to seize the Kashmir Valley. That was when Shastri ordered the Indian Army to cross the international border, calling Pakistan's bluff. In Punjab, the army reached the outskirts of Lahore and the biggest tank battles to be fought after the Second World War took place in the Sialkot sector in Punjab. On the 22nd of September, the guns fell silent after India and Pakistan agreed on a UN-sponsored ceasefire. After three weeks of fierce fighting, the war had reached a stalemate, but India had the upper hand. India held 1,920 square kilometers of Pakistan territory and lost 540 square kilometers. On the 10th of January 1966, Shastri and Ayub Khan signed the Tashkent Agreement at the initiative of Alexei Kosygin, the Premier of the then Soviet Union. Under the treaty, the two armies went back to their pre-war positions. Sadly, a day after the treaty, India's Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri, who had won great respect for the way he handled the war, passed away in Tashkent. After the war, India launched a massive expansion and modernization of its armed forces, 
keeping in mind a two-pronged threat from Pakistan and China. And this preparedness was visible in 1971 when India decisively defeated Pakistan in the Bangladesh War. Among Shastri's legacy is the Jai Jawan Jai Kisan slogan, which he coined during the war. Invoking soldiers during the war was understandable, but creatively he also invoked farmers at a time when the country was facing acute food shortages.